damn, Daniel. Back at it again with the white cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> so as you saw in last episode, we put together like the frame and we're just testing these cabinets and making sure they fit. And now we're gonna get started with the ship lab. Here, Grant's just opening up a can of Sherwin-Williams Grizzle Gray, just so we can pre-paint each of the pieces of shiplap, as it'll be too difficult to paint the grooves once they're installed. So the first piece is like the most important because it kind of sets the stage for all the other pieces that will fall in line. So we took a little time making sure it was at a perfect 45 degree angle and then boom, they all just fall into place. Simple as that. <laughs> Money. Dude, so good. All right, so I just notched this out, and the way I did this, I'll try and catch it on camera next time, but I used the miter saw to get as close as I could, but since it's a circle, it's not gonna cut all the way through, it's not gonna go all the way in, so there's still a little bit uh, to cut, so I'm gonna use my oscillating tool to finish the cut, and it looks you know, pretty clean, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, so now we'll test fit it, and then nail it in, and then this is for the fireplace, this cut out here, but there's about a one and a half inch glass frame that goes all the way around the perimeter so like I have a lot of play in my cuts but I'm so I'm a bit of a perfectionist so I wanted it perfect like right here but I don't need to be that precise but let's see if it fits and then let's nail it in so I'm gonna line up this edge because this is the edge that most matters most right now just make it barely flush but not over Okay, that looks good. Check the top, not over. And then check here, it's not overhanging, it looks perfect. So, go ahead and nail this in. You wanna put just enough nails to hold it, but not too many that you gotta have to go back and patch them all. So this looks pretty good, it's not moving anywhere. Pretty happy with it.
All right, so now we are at the point where we're reconnecting the center from above the TV now that we've come down the sides. And we made this line here uh, perfectly straight down from the top, and that's what we've been using as our guide. However, in order to line these two new boards up, I had to basically shimmy them, and they're now to the left of the line, about an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch. Ideally, they'd be straight on the line, but we're basically just using the boards as a gauge as we push them up. So if there's a particle of dust or a little piece of sawdust in the middle of that gap and we push it up into the next row, it'll cause the board to be off a slight degree and then that compounds down. And then that's why this is not, not perfect right here. But because of the disconnect from the top of the TV to down to here, you're not gonna be able to know that this is just off this, this line. And it's more important that we get this angle right here perfect so this is what we're going to go with what you currently see and then we'll continue this down here and then again down down below as well and i think it'll turn out fine but just something to know that it's basically impossible to get this perfect unless we did this whole wall with full boards and then cut cut out like the tv section however that's just a waste of, of boards since we're just going to cut it out anyway and it's easier just to do these smaller sections so there's pros and cons to both approaches, but I think this is the best way to do it. You gotta align these pieces just right. Okay, so we're now putting in this piece and this piece, and we realized that we can't put these in because I'd already nailed all of this, and you can't you'd like slide these in in any direction. So what we ended up doing was prying this one here away a little bit. You kind of see there's a gap right here. So we pulled this one out and kind of sandwiched these ones together. Luckily, this, this line looks okay. I was worried that I didn't cut it correctly. So now what we're gonna do is push this one back in with a rubber mallet, and then once we get these kind of positioned properly, and then nail these two in place. And then the rest, I, like these two triangles, I can slide up like this, and these ones I can slide in sideways. So I think we'll be okay for the rest of them. Okay, so it's always right at the end when you run into problems. We're going around this HVAC van, which is the last piece on the front, and we cut these side pieces to slide in here. And then I was gonna slide in this piece, and then I realized, crap, this piece should be continuing up on an angle. So, we could have just butted a piece up against like, like this and just not had a line, which is what both my dad and Bianca said to do. However, I didn't want to do that, having done the whole wall perfectly. So I went and I recut these side pieces. And then we have these middle guys here. And I didn't I didn't nail these two on these two on the sides in because I wouldn't be able to put these ones in the middle, so I kinda of have to do all four together. But then it looks nice and clean. And you're never gonna see these lines, but I will. So, therefore it has to be done. But see, I left, I left some wiggle room here. Therefore, I think it's one, two, three. So 
so this one's the middle. So I can slide it over like that and then therefore it looks centered. Now let's glue it in and then we're done. All right, so we're finishing off this corner right here. We're gonna leave this this side open because that's going to be covered by a cabinet and then we'll leave that as like an access to the back where wires and stuff can come out of and you can access the power. But we're gonna fill in this section here and it's kind of a puzzle because you had to, you kind of have to create these pieces and make them all before you install them because if you install this one, you won't be able to install this one because you, got, you can't get it in there with the shiplap lock. So, I have these three pieces. The first is this little guy. Then we have this this guy. And then in order to fit this third piece in the middle, you can't just like stick it in like this. You have to kind of slide it in from this direction. So get it in there and then slide it this way. Get everything nice and tight. And here we go. Just gotta nail it. And then we'll leave this guy loose. I think I think he'll, uh, he'll stay in place. He's not going anywhere. But there we go. Then now this side is complete. We can put this cabinet in and then there's gonna be a trim piece going right across here. But this is the last piece. Almost done. Now that all the shiplap is up, we can finally fill in all the nail holes. As you can see, this was a team effort as we had a bunch to fill. And then once the nail holes are dry, with a little bit of wipe on, wipe off action, it'll smooth it away and then we can get to painting the shiplap once again. So now see how it's touching? I'm gonna pull it back out. And then I'm gonna pull away here and bend it. Putting my toe here and bend it in. And then how do you know if it's too much ball in the middle or if you you know what I mean? Well you know like to me it's just like that's so little but you want it tight a little bit, yeah, that's fine. If it's like if you're about to break the board to bend it in, that's too much. This is very little. Here we had a ethernet port for the internet and I wanted to keep this inside the cabinet so we just had to cut a little hole here and then feed it through. So clean. It's probably a bit hard to see but we just put two shims in we put two shims in underneath this cabinet right there to make it level. Come out here. And if we look at the level, it's pretty much perfect. So now we're going to screw this in place. And we made sure that like the, the gap over here is the same gap as over here. Alright, so we're going to be installing this handle on the other side, this one's already in, but I'll just show you the steps. First, I put down a layer of tape just to protect the surface. Take 
by measuring. Or actually first, we'll use this guy. So this is basically just a depth gauge that I'm gonna put on the side here. And this is just, I already set it so that it's in the very center of this board. All right, so now that we have the centers marked, we will now use the measuring tape at the top. And I know that my two marks need to be at 12 inches and 17 inches. So now we have our two locations for our pilot holes. I'm gonna start with a small drill bit. And that is so I can get with the small drill, but it's easier to make the holes very precise. So I'm going to start with a small one and line it up perfectly. All right, so now we have that drilled, we can move up to the larger drill bit, which is the size we actually need. And then we can just use these holes I already drilled as a guide. Now that that's done, we can take this tape off. Again, this was just protecting the cabinet. And also you can like write on this to mark your holes without marking up your cabinet too. So you can see that these are pretty clean here. Here's our handle. Now these usually come with two sets of screws, one long and one short. Depending on the, the depth that you need, you can use either one. In my case, the short ones are long enough. So just open this and pop these in. Then just get these started. Here we are just screwing in the cabinets to the wall, and then we're also leveling the door fronts. Now we're just filling in the gaps on either side of the cabinets with filler strips. All right guys, thank you for making it this far into the video. Really appreciate it. However, there is going to be a part three. Aww. But in part three, it will be the final part and you'll get to see the install of the floating shelves and some nice wallpaper. Yay. Last peek. You can lean it on this shelf as well when you get it up here. He's taking off the best for this. Cause it's a floor vent. So it doesn't have any screws to hold it in. Gotcha. Or you can I'm use talking to the camera, did it? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine.